isn't working. Hey everyone, TN Outdoors 9, thanks for checking in. 22 Long Rifle, the basement level for self-defense calibers and a caliber that some people will not give any consideration, even in a rifle. You will find many testimonials from law enforcement and also the medical community regarding the terminal effectiveness of 22 ammo. One study in particular that can be viewed in the public domain was published by law enforcement officer Greg Elifritz. Without getting into a lot of detail, based on 154 shootings involving 22 caliber, there were 213 hits. 60 of those were incapacitating first shots and 34% of those shots were fatal. To be very clear, he was not implying, nor am I, that 22 caliber is the most effective for self-defense. There are numerous other factors that will not be covered in this review. There is commonly voiced rationale why 22 long rifle is preferred by some and absolutely not by others. I'm not going to dwell on these points as you can pause the video and dig into this yourself. I'm just trying to provide some data points for those intrigued by the caliber as I find the Veloster attractive due to mass for caliber and especially velocity. I had some questions that I could not resolve with my own research, so I reached out to good friend 22 Plinkster. Specifically, I had chronograph velocity from a Ruger 1022, very popular rifle, 18 and a half inch barrel, and it came in somewhat lower than the advertised velocity on the Veloster of 1,435 feet per second. Dave confirmed that CCI uses a 24 inch barrel for chronograph velocities. Plinkster also forwarded this photo. This is a 9 millimeter, 147 grain spear gold dot. Right? Well, it looks like that, but this is a Veloster that he removed from a raccoon. Perfect expansion, but I'm not optimistic we're going to have anything close to that due to the reduced velocity from this small handgun, and those numbers are forthcoming. I truly believe that velocity is going to be the key in getting expansion from the Veloster, so how are we doing with the 3.5 inch barrel from the SR-22, 10 shots measured from 10 feet? The average is 28% lower than advertised, and we dropped over 200 feet per second compared to an 18 and a half inch barrel. We are ready for some block shots under the lights. This was provided by Clear Ballistics. This is their 18 inch Spartan block. Weighs approximately 35 pounds. It has been calibrated. This particular one has been recycled a couple of times, and there are some artifacts in there, but it's not going to affect what we're about to do here in just a moment. 10 feet, first five shots are with the bear gel. Take a quick look at those, and then five more with the FBI heavy clothing protocol. Not too surprised with that. We actually had a couple that passed all the way through the 18 inch block. They're in this box of heavy clothing and they probably didn't go very far into that. There's an AR-500 plate behind the box, so nothing's leaving the building. These three are penetrating anywhere from 13, let's see if I can read my writing here, 13 and a half inches up to 15 and three quarter inches. None of these, from what I can tell, are expanding, so I'm assuming that's what happened with the two pass-throughs. Okay, so next we're going to go with the FBI Heavy Clothing Protocol. Four different layers. Denim will be on the top. That's the heaviest layer. And this represents somewhat of a worst case scenario with clothing. And I would think that in most self-defense incidents, folks are wearing clothing. But you never know. So five more shots after we get this thing dressed. And hopefully that will provoke some expansion. If you like keeping things in the block, those are pretty good results. Everything is retained. They're coming in between 14 and a half and 16 and a quarter inches on those last five shots. Still, I'm not seeing any expansion. So what happened, uh, it seems that the heavy clothing diminished the momentum enough that these stayed in the block. And if you look at the overall pattern of the eight that are in here, 
Those are coming in between roughly 13 and a quarter and say 16 and a quarter, 16 and a half. And if I'm testing, say, the major service calibers, 380, that's not really a major caliber, but a lot of people carry that. So if you're running 380, say up to 45, in the semi-automatic service calibers, look at that. That's uh, 13 to 16, 16 and a half. That would be perfect, but this is 22 long rifle. So I'm not going to rehash all of that. I'm sure it'll be taken care of in the comments. So let's get some final numbers here. Let's get these out of the block, the two out of the box, and have the wrap-up. It is a fact that the CCI Veloster is engineered for a rifle, and I would bet that many people would attest to its effectiveness on small game. For the individual who chooses a 22 handgun for self-defense, either in the home or on the street, due to the ballistic potential of the caliber, it is even more imperative to make a wise ammunition choice. As mentioned earlier, the Veloster was attractive for this review due to the combination of mass for caliber and velocity. That concept is followed by many people, including myself, who carry a centerfire handgun caliber, whether that be 380, 9mm, 45 ACP, 357 Magnum, etc. For those committed to the 22 and in consideration of the data presented and small sample of results, would you carry the Veloster or go with a common 40 grain solid and just focus on the penetration aspect? Regardless of that decision, it might be a better option than defending yourself with a sharp stick. Thanks for watching.